and um, I've been rewriting the Greek tragedies that survive into short, sometimes longer uh, lyrics. I'm going to read five of them, and I chose five that um, have to do with different shades of different degrees of guilt and of crime and of punishment, and they're all um, five big mythological criminals, but I, I'm most interested, I suppose, in retelling their, their stories from a psychological, a lyrical perspective. So the first one is uh, Prometheus, and it's in his voice. Dry as fennel in an adamantine stalk, where to rise and hear what voice round the herded heart, an infant thunder, infant thirst, or speech oxed. How let loose the bloom of my skin without sleep, without wind-scraped scour, without bending a knee to the earth or waking a fist first. Ribcage harness, scarlet winds, how to lie wedged at the hands of this threat hour, keep agate eyes keeled to the rain and the rain how to drink when it drips like a flood through the trumpet-thick throat, loud with the brink. You can fill me, crook, Talent, questions, silt, sadden sea, but I can't sink. And this one is called Loud Wound in Corinth, and it's Medea. <clears throat> Batter the gates, splitting my head, but nobody can. Inside, twin asthmatic seas, and my heart's beaten with tin, make small rattle. I have a number of everything. A face of glass, tinged cold, a sparrow full of steel, a distance of sleep, and what I will do. And this is the chorus speaking to Medea, and at various points in the book, the chorus leader addresses um, one of the protagonists, as they do, as the chorus does in the Greek tragedies also. So, chorus. <clears throat> and it describes her a bit at the beginning of the poem. Neck fled back, motionless held, voice rung thin, surging with father and fret, bitten wild with wrong. Through the half cry, half fulvid moan, when you wake in an ear that never heard song, and dusk bucks forth, and your thoughts yawn and snap like dry wood, remember through the violence we are speaking. Rear your hand back, cradle your wrath, lullaby to your breath, over and over, I beg you, come out of the house. A leak in the air, shrill, and the light pale tears drown also my eyes. I say weaken, sleep, crack, let it hurt you, and blithe the wound. And this is called Portrait of My Father Silent at Aulis, and it's written from Iphigenia to her father, Agamemnon, big criminal. Um, <clears throat> no way between the lips, balancing an overture of sleep and self and brass, nostril drinking bitter taste from milk warm salt air, yoke eye leading melted dance, rusted fist that wants to break. He is acting, shoulders climbing forest long, fur deep with question. I see myself small silver grade on the way to the rankling estuary where the heart floats. And finally, this is Colonist by Degrees, and it's about Oedipus, who is, it's interesting to think about him as a criminal. I mean, he didn't know what he was doing, but he still managed to uh, blind himself in the end. So he arrives at Colonist in the last play, and he dies very mysteriously. This force of will, he goes forth and nobody really knows how he managed to die and so I tried to capture the sort of the landscape uh, inside a, a blind man still imagining what's going on outside and his sort of sensory experience here and at the same time he's performing the rites. So you'll hear in the poem when he does something literal and when he goes back inside and then at the end how he dies. And spoken in his voice. Colonist by degrees. Soon at my window's heart, like a question, whether cold, whether night, 
whether here or in a lash of my easternmost helplessness, where there is nothing that is not alive, I stand without notion, whether love, whether season, sun rouse vertical soon at my window's vein. Three bulls waiting, cover the rim and handles at the mouth with tongues of wool. My door has a liver and a sense of smell. It opens to insanity as a child and can wink like a darling bud. Third bowl with water, honey, add no wine, stand and face. My window has a heart, don't ask me how the rain beats through, and an altar and a grave where the sunlight prays in the dirt like a cacophonic beast. It's my fault this world is too alive. Pray mutely, listen, at least the earth is thirsty. Outside, a nightingale's bulwark tongue nursing on laurel and gray golden olives, tufts of wind flowing nomad. The hollow wild pear, an instrument for life, grudge me nothing. I'll be here and far from here, in a moment walk out of the house that I am.